Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. Welcome to day 30 of July Journaling Joy. We are almost at the end of this little adventure. It's been fun. Um, today I wanted to share some thoughts with you about how you can record items of gratitude and things that have worked for me. Uh, one thing that I have really learned, a um, couple things actually, is that creating a gratitude journal or thankfulness journal um, is a way to balance out the tendency for maybe some of us to be more melancholy or things seem overwhelming and it's hard to get out of the, what I call, nicknamed the pit of despair and you're just feeding that um, discontent or misery there was a time in my life where I felt like I really battled with that. And looking back, I think some of it was honestly hormonal because I had several kids very close together. And um, that can affect your adrenal glands and that can lead to mood swings and so forth. Not to get off on that tangent, but I've had to learn, and things are, are so much better now anyway, but to focus on the blessings of God in my life. And it just really helps you find joy in so many things, even the smallest of things. Um, and if you're writing with paper and a fountain pen that you like, <laughs> I've noticed that I can just like keep dreaming up things to be thankful for. So it's not that I'm not thankful, but I'm like, I'm loving this writing experience and as I'm thinking about what I'm thankful for, then I, I think of other things, and it's so much fun to write with that nice pen and ink combination and paper. That can also encourage that, and then that makes your mind think, thankfulness, thankfulness, what's good in my life? What, Even in the roughest times, what is there that I can take um, pleasure or take peace and, and comfort in? So... I have not done a thankful gratitude journal record like this. This is actually a thing I did that was sponsored by um, Faith Heirlooms, but it was an advent calendar. But I was thinking you could take a day, like a thankful month or however you'd want to do it, 30 or 31 days of gratitude, and each day of the month you could feature items that you're thankful for, and if you like embellishing your um, writings you could you could do that and that would be a really fun thing to look back on I know lots of times people do uh, focus on that during Thanksgiving but um, that would be great for any month of the year I think and maybe even especially a month of the year like say January when you're after the holidays and things kind of seem to be at a lull or you know maybe whatever month maybe is more mundane for you. Maybe that would be a good month to choose to focus on the good things in your life. So that just came to mind today, but I like that idea and I enjoy this kind of journaling on these cards. Um, I just put them on one of these binder rings when I was done and put a little bow on there. The other thing is just to create a gratitude journal in whatever size notebook you enjoy writing in. Or it could be a way to use up a notebook size that you have on hand that you're not real wild about. So um, I have this Taroko, I think it is, usually I write in the front. Taroko Shop, got, on, got it off Amazon, uh, Tomoe River Paper. It's not a real big book, but this is one that I filled um, last fall through early this winter. And then I started on my Cosmo Air Light. This is the super big one. Do I have the pages on the front? It's 320 pages from Danica 58, Cosmo Air Light. And I love writing in this. It is my favorite thing to, to do, I guess you could say, with writing. I'm loving the paper. It makes the pens look pretty. I like how my pens work on the paper. And so find your, your favorite size or use up a notebook that's sitting around that you don't know what to do with. Um, sometimes it's easy to accumulate those things. There's so many cute ones that you can see at the store and buy, but then if you're like me, you found, I don't really know what to do with this. Um, another thing I'll just throw out there, if you have little kids, mine are all bigger now. Um, I have grandkids, but my youngest 
kid at home is 15. So when they were little though, I would make a journal of cute things they said, funny things they said, or very touching or, or sweet things they said. So if you have smaller kids, you will not regret taking the few minutes it takes to record those things in the journal because we look at them now and we can be like cracking up because some of them are absolutely hilarious but it's really special um that isn't exactly a gratitude but it can certainly spark gratitude to do that um and then the other thing is this setup that i'm currently using just about to switch out i've set up my other setup um, but I will do a video on that. But I had this section that I was doing for a while at the end of each day where I would write down a highlight of the day. So, um, well, one of them was a cute video of two of my grandkids and they kind of met each other via video and their responses were just adorable. Um, one of my granddaughter's birth, a lot of these were featured on the grandkids this week. Lunch with a friend. Um, highlight of the day was doing the sewing project and so on so it's whatever is a highlight which in a way I think is a gratitude item a highlight of a day um, highlight the the thing that stands out of the day that was special to you and then you will start to see if you haven't already gotten into this habit of thinking that there's so much to be thankful for in so many ways every day and um, it can be anything I like this pen and nib I like this sticker I love the crispy M&Ms <laughs> wonder why I'm thinking about that um the, the comfort of a nice warm cup of coffee in the morning or or whatever people in your life your job or your hobbies just no end of what you can record and it really does help make you feel thankful Another thing um, I want to just add as a helpful thing to breed contentment instead of discontent is when your YouTube binge watching is to focus on, we can watch those things and want the next thing. And that was certainly my story and can still be my, my experience if I don't watch out for that. It's fun to learn. It's fun to get new ideas. But then next thing you know, you're like, I really need to do that planner size, or I really need that leather notebook cover, or man, that pen is pretty. I, I need to buy that. And we can be on a, a, a never-ending cycle of accumulating. So what I have found works for me, if I'm at a point in the evening, um, things are slow. Right now my husband's out of town. My kids are all older. They do their own thing. Sometimes I just want to watch a little YouTube video for some inspiration. Um, I, you know, sometimes look for an idea of a new craft or something, or new DIY project to try. But also, I like watching videos of something that I already have. So, for example, I might look up Cosmo Air Light. Um, I just forget the site. 320 page traveler's notebook. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I bought that because I really like how this person's using that. Or if you have a notebook cover look up that size that you have and see what other people are doing with it. So it might just be that you want to mix it up a little bit. Maybe you don't need to purchase something new. Maybe you just need to consider how you could reconfigure what you already have. That has been um, helpful for me and helpful to realize that <clears throat> a traveler's notebook leather cover even though maybe I start using it as a planner or a December daily cover, it can morph into something else. For example, I bought this Cherry Sky notebook from um, Chic Sparrow, and I was going to use it for December because I liked that it was red and thought that would be really fun. I have all this in there for some reason. Um, and then it's like, well, I don't really like using this as a planner, or it, it got to feel too bulky. I didn't want that much bulk for an everyday planner. So then I got the idea, oh, I know, it could be my ink journal. And it's worked out splendidly for an ink journal. But if I ever want to go back to using it as a, a planner or like my faith binder notebook thing, 
I can easily switch it over. So don't limit yourself. Just because you buy it for one thing doesn't mean you can't repurpose it for another later. I think we, at least I speak for myself, I, I can get in a rut or think, no, I bought it for that. I don't want to switch it out or even put it on pause for a while. You don't have to use them all, all the time. Maybe a purpose will come up later and you'll be like super glad that you just put that on hold for a while. So those are my suggestions for today. Um, we're about wrapped up. I will be back tomorrow to um, do the final July journaling joy. I hope these have been fun for you and uh, I hope you have a great day. The weekend's approaching, so um, enjoy that and talk to you soon. Bye.